everyone, and welcome to Blue Star Rising, the Templar Awakening. Michael Henry Dunn here with, of course, uh, the one and only Reverend Maya Nartumid. Hey there, Maya. How are you doing today? Okay. Ah, right. I'm, I'm alive and kicking. <laughs> All right. Love the brightness of that uh, garment you've got there. It's very spring-like. Oh, yeah. And the scene behind me, of course, is a crest stone scene. I thought I'd get one with the greenery and everything. Right. And the medallion. Tell me about the medallion, the gold medallion. Oh, well, this one, uh, Pamela Minton made this one for me and gifted it to me. Isn't it beautiful with Mary on there? Oh, Mother Mary. Okay. Uh huh. And this, this is uh, my segment name, which is just for me, that Thoth gave me uh, in, in hieroglyphs. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, speaking of hieroglyphs and things ancient and past and present and future, we are here <clears throat> to talk about Reality War Part 5 and how quantum mechanics um, affects timelines and the, the concept of time as a mutable wave of energy, right? Um, right. And, and this is something that we've talked about here and there, um, and particularly over the course of the Reality War series here, but also in the light group work that um, our dear friend, Reverend William Bueller and, and Edie Cooper um, shepherded for many years, uh, my acquaintance with that and their work with you and how much of, of Bill's work was inspired by you. This was a particular thing where, you know, having a talk with Bill one day and he says, well, you know, the past is not fixed. The past can change. And I said, whoa, whoa wait a minute, <laughs> I'm sorry. The past is past. It's, you know, somebody drops a copy of the uh, King James Bible at uh, a certain location in the library, and uh, then we, I pick it up 200 years later, and it's the same book, right? You know, and, and I had an instinctive rebellion intellectually against this concept that time is so mutable that our consciousness could actually um, collectively, and as you say, as a dynamic of consensus shift possibly to a different timeline and to that that would affect the past as well as the future so um the video that we're about to see i think addresses this in you know a very compelling way that um you know takes the mind-bending aspects of this and brings it into a context where, as I perceive it, your intention is that we understand our responsibility um, moving through, you know, what you call the pure time stream or the Rana time wave, which, you know, proceeds from source, which you might call the, the true time wave. And that within that are billions of, of potential timelines in the life of any individual, right? Yes. And that there is part of the purpose of you bringing this forward at this time and as part of the reality war series is that there are dark factions, off-planet factions, um, arconic cloud um, influences that, not that they can control timelines, but that they can divert our attention from the true Rana time wave of our upward spiritual evolution and distract us off to tangents that will cause us to go off away from the timeline that leads towards ascension, towards the light, towards world system two, and that that is the agenda in play. And that the purpose of, of this video, which we're about to, to see, as I understand it, and just, you know, let me know if I'm a little off on this, is to give us all a, a better understanding of how the quantum reality of time and the existence of uh, multiple timelines within the Rana time wave, um, what our responsibility is in it, 
and how we can accept that responsibility and be wary of attempts to divert us from the upward path. Would that be, I'm hoping that's a fairly accurate description? Yes, it is. And of course, we've discussed this before. I have, on, especially on the Reality War series, this is the fifth one now, um, but not at this level. Each one takes us into a deeper dive and a, a different, under, you know, a different look at the, the core subject, because it's not a simple subject, obviously, and it has a lot of different parameters to it. And yet, as, it, as I point out in this video, it is very important for us to, to grasp the core of it. You don't have to get all the fancy science of it specifically, but, but you know, to grasp the core of it because it allows each individual to make a more informed decision in regard to you know, their path and uh, what they, how, they, how they deal with reality and, and how they uh, look at other things that are coming out in the news and the, you know, in the internet and, and YouTube and stuff. So very interesting things, but, you know, so a lot of it is, has a lot of truth to it, but it doesn't grasp the core understanding. And when you take that core out of it, it seems to go off in another direction. This is, of course, uh, in, uh, the way that I, with my Thoth contact, uh, see it you know this is a thothic perspective as i call it everyone has to come to their own perspective but that's i believe my god job in life is just to put that out there and let people make up their own minds so i feel that right now understanding how this works is especially in the core of it i'm sorry my cat is just going crazy right now uh is uh no you well, can't you can't do that. Ouch! <laughs> he's tearing up everything. He's got his foot wrapped around the computer. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry we didn't get to see him. I know we've got the lovely uh, custom background, but is this... Yes, yeah. He's going to have to get somewhere else. Let me put him down on the ground. Maybe he'll... Go, 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 go. Go play. Go play. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> he's trying to divert my timeline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. He's subject to the arconic cloud, the arconic cat cloud. Apparently. Oh, yeah, right. So anyway, I probably said wow. too much about it. It, it. it speaks for itself. So let's right. just watch okay. it. So before, we go, before we go to the video, um, which as always is you know, quite beautifully um, illustrated uh, with the, the graphics that uh, Maya has uh, accompanying it. Um, early on in the video, you mentioned the um, black hole at the core of the Milky Way galaxy, mm -hmm. right? And that rather than being, you know, a scary thing, like it's going to suck us all into a point of such intense gravity that it's a singularity and eventually the whole universe will disappear in these horrible black holes, right? Um, and that you, you know, present a different light on it. Well, interestingly, in the synchronicity department, you will find a headline story in the New York Times today May 12th, 2022, stating that for the first time, the black hole at the heart of the Milky Way galaxy is available as of today. Yes, I saw that, but not before I did the video. <laughs> I saw that today. Some friends sent the images, uh, put them up on QLI. Yeah, right. amazing. So, yeah. yeah, so make of that what you will. Huh? I just found it pretty interesting. It is. It is. Coincidence I you. That, uh, you know, this is. Uh, part of the topic today. All right, so um, with that, we will now share the video with you. Um, 26 fascinating minutes, and then we will be back to discuss it. So please enjoy, and we'll be back with you immediately. The Reality War series, and we are now on part five, is based on the understanding of quantum mechanics and how that affects timelines and the ability to see into the future and the past and the ability to somewhat control certain timelines and how they are perceived and thus created. So, I felt that this article which I wrote in 2002 was appropriate to read to you now with commentary 
from me now in 2022. From my 2002 article, As a collective, we tend to think of the past as an immutable reality. One cannot change the past. However, according to my Akashic insights and my conversations with the illumined being Thoth, time is a mutable wave of energy that reacts and thus changes in accordance with variations in the anomalies of the timeline. What I am referring to as the timeline is a sequential field of perceptive consensus, many souls agreeing on a flow of sequencing and how one's reality is created within that flow. Ironically, in a world that has so much diversity and conflict, we are on this planet together because the majority of souls incarnated here agree on the parameters of the timeline we are jointly creating. We may think of this consensus as one body with a pair of eyes observing a flow or path of energy. It has recently been confirmed by physicists that time can be changed through observing it. In July of 2002, I wrote about an article which I had recently read. It relates to the topic of the mutability of time. In the article, Quantum Aspects of Life and Health by Gary A. Scott, posted on the HeartMath website, 628-2002, the topic of of quantum computers is discussed. Mr. Scott begins by writing about consciousness as being the controller of health and well-being. He refers to this as being the quantum aspects of life and health. Whether the bits of matter are particles or waves has long been known to be determined by observation. When we observe it, it becomes something different than when we do not observe it, indicating that we are indeed the creators of our universe. The author then discusses an article in USA Today entitled Quantum Computer. The USA article reveals that scientists are at present working diligently to create an atomic quantum computer, or QC. These QCs would have immense speed, far beyond our current ordinary computers. Such speed would be possible as these quantum computers would have the ability to operate outside of the space-time limitations. Mr. Scott states that a quantum computer would be a billion times faster than a Pentium 3 PC. Unquote. Well, of course, from the standpoint of 2022, a Pentium 3 PC is a dinosaur. To continue... According to Mr. Scott, in his paraphrasing of the USA Today article, and I quote, The quantum computer holds an infinite number of right answers for an infinite number of universes. The computer just gives you the right answer for the universe you happen to be in at the time. Unquote. So in order to believe in quantum computers, which is a fact since functioning prototypes have already been made, mass consciousness will have to believe in parallel universes. Now I state from the perspective of 2022 that, of course, first of all, the quantum computers have been made and uh, they aren't, you know, circulating widely, but they are in some people's hands. And secondly, not only parallel universes would have to be uh, believed in, but dimensions as well. That's a whole another topic, so I won't go there, but it, it implies a great deal more than just parallel universes. So to continue, then there is the process of what quantum computer scientists are calling entanglement. As Mr. Scott explains it, and this is a quote, when two atoms are observed by the same force, they become entangled and remain so even though they may be light years apart. Their spins are all in position at once. But the instant one entangled, one entangled atom is observed, its spin goes one way. At the same instant, the spin of the other particle locks in the opposite direction, even though they are light years apart. 
And that's the end of the quote. So in essence, quantum computers would be employing this system of relatedness between alternate universes, realities, to compute beyond the normal limitations of time and space. Returning to the topic of observing the timeline, we can see the relationship between the observer and the observed in this context. When we individually or collectively look at any place along the timeline, so it is altered to some extent. If many people observe a point along this line differently, it can become conflicted and create an interference field of alternate versions of that past event. Actually, there are always unlimited versions in the alternate universes at, of any point or occurrence along a timeline, but when souls debate that point with the belief of its mutability, so a conflict of energies takes place when, uh, within the consensual reality of the collective. This can bring multiple effects into the picture, for the alternative outcomes of cause are attempting to come together in the ordained, immutable framework that the multiple observers have established as their reality. This confliction will eventually result in the breaking down of dualistic perspectives, either this or that, and bring us into the unified field of full Christ awareness, or what Thoth calls the Atosic Universe. Now, I'm going to pause for a moment in the reading to say I've mentioned the Atosic Universe in a lot, a lot of my work, and it's not a place you go in physical body or in souls go to it. Um, it is a state of consciousness more than anything else. There are other parameters, but that's basically what it is. So looking at this from the perspective of 2022, we see a lot of these conflicted reality spinning around and around now more than ever before in our belief systems, in, um, in the way we approach our realities, and how the negative forces, shall we say, are trying to co-opt our realities more than ever before. All this bears consideration as to how we are actually unwinding the knot even though it seems very negative in the process, it's simply that all of that was already there and we are unraveling it so that we can come to a new and better consensual reality. Now, we're not going to be all cozy in the toxic universe together in this, in this time, in this place, or even in World System 2. But in World System 2, we will have a greater grasp on that, that presence and we will experience it more often even though we will still be in a dual, dualistic system, it will be one that's balanced and allows for this atosic universe to have a place in our uh, perspective. So now to continue with the article. Another aspect of the mutability of time, and thus the past, is the movement of all stars toward the center of their galaxies. It has recently been observed that all at least those which have thus far been observed by scientists, galaxies, have a black hole at their centers, and that, far from being ominous, it forms the creative nucleus of the galaxy as a dynamic system in the universe. According to my conversations with both all existent timelines in a galaxy, of which there could be billions, are affected by the stars being pulled toward the black hole at the center of its galaxy. There is the pure time streaming coming from the unified field of the cosmos. The pure time streaming is that which all timelines access as the trunk of their tree, becoming branches stemming from that one source. Now, to interrupt again, I don't know why I did not, when I wrote this, name this time streaming, which is the Rana time wave. For some reason, I did not do that, but that's what is being discussed here. So as the sun is in light quantum dialogue with the central black hole, the earth is feeding these codes into its core. As a result, 
Time bends, warps, expands, and contracts all around and within us, yet most of us are oblivious to this dance. We have our clocks, time zones, day and night, number of days in the year, etc., and we adhere faithfully to them. We have history books with all the facts of the past, which are the mortar that binds us and that tears us apart. Yet all of this is a consensual drama. This is a large topic. I only wish to reveal here a smattering of this perspective as an introduction to better understanding the Akashic record, at least from my Thoth engendered perspective. When I bring forth information on the past from the Akasha, I am mindful that as I observe it, so it changes. This would be true for anyone in the position of observing the past, present, or future. So what can we trust? What can we know that we know? Who are our savants? If what they, we see is what they, we have changed it to be. I have no answers to these questions. However, I do believe that humanity will never be happy with the reality that spawns such questions. In order to receive the peace which it so ardently seeks, hu humankind must individually and collectively move beyond the paradigm of dualism and personal preference, i.e., I want it to be this way, before individuals can truly be free to accept the fullness of divinity within them. This concludes the article I wrote in 2002. Now, at the time, of course, I'm asking a lot of questions that I'm saying I don't have answers for, and I still don't, actually, <laughs> these many years later, but I do have a little more insight, I believe, from the Thothic perspective that is open to me since then. This causes me to go back to what I said to my mother when I was about five years old. And I know I said it because she wrote it down. I believe I can quote it almost verbatim. And that is, sometimes we look at something and see only a small part of it because we don't believe there is any more. Basically, I was speaking of quantum realities. And, you know, it gets frustrating if we think about the possibility indeed, probably the fact, that everything's always changing. We don't like change even in our normal, everyday 3D lives, much less the fact that all of this is changing constantly on the quantum level, even our history books. You can pull out an old musty history book that was written, you know, years ago, that was written about things that happened hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and it can be different from what it read just, I don't know, two years ago. That is mind-boggling. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> but, you know, that's because we are so set in the way we understand things. It's best, really, not to go down that rabbit hole because it doesn't reveal to us the whole truth. Remember from my past uh, video, we must bear witness to the whole truth. Even if we can't understand it or it's not being revealed to us in the moment, we must realize that it exists. So where does that bring us in regard to information we are receiving? We need to understand that we are part of a system and as part of that system, we don't want to be contained in the box of it. We want to be able to reach out beyond it when necessary, but it is necessary to be in the system at the time, at the moment we perceive it. That means when you read something that happened in history, and actually it is true from the perspective of the whole content of reality, because things can be fake news, um, you know, uh, that context is given to you through the heart. And, you know, for instance, people that try to create alternative 
histories like oh you know millions of Jews were not killed in in the in the in the Holocaust there was no such thing as a Holocaust well now that is actually fake news in the sense that it's a fractured timeline somebody tried to create that timeline and they're wobbling down on it but it does not conform to the Rana time wave to the true pure streaming that all timelines that are generated from source and from the consciousness of higher perspectives are moving down. If you want to go down a bumpy road and create your own little old timeline that says the Jews were not killed in the Holocaust, well, be my guest. <laughs> but it's not going to lead you anywhere. It's going to start breaking down right under your feet. So from that perspective, there is a truth in certain historical relevance. But there may also be a timeline where World War II never happened, and thus these horrible things didn't occur. That does not justify us to say, oh, well, then we can just embrace that so, uh, you know, the Jews were never killed in the Holocaust. No, that's not the way it works. The way it works is that you accept the responsibility of the timelines that you consensually create before you can move beyond them. Now, that's a huge topic into itself. I'm not going to go there any further, but I want to give some kind of reference to understanding our responsibility in the world and the environments, the timelines and the quantum fields that we create. We can't just dismiss them by saying, oh, well, that was another timeline, blah, blah, blah. You know, we have to understand the potential that is present within us to create new realities and the responsibility of that potential. So what about channels, sources that are coming from elsewhere, like my Akashic sessions for people and the history that I... Uh, present from the past and the understanding of the new earth star and it's, that we're going there and all of this. How does that line up with all of the understanding that's being presented in this video? From what I receive, and I can only share with you anything that comes out of my mouth, <laughs> is either my own personal uh, perspective, which I delineate as being that, or what I believe comes from this Thothic perspective. So what I receive from that source is that if one is truly in accord with the source receipt, whatever that is, and I believe that I am as far as any human being can be, but, you know, I may not be. That's a, that's a subjective statement that I'm making there. However, let's say I am, for, for the sake of argument here, or non-argument. <laughs> um, and if I am, then the realities that I'm presenting, or the understanding of history and future and whatever, are in accord with the Rana time wave, in accord with the pure stream. So they are presenting a picture that is in a high alignment with that stream. Not the only alignment, but one of the higher alignments. And the reason it's being given to me is because this alignment is what is needed by certain people on this planet that are coming to receive it. Yeah, I know even that is mind-bending. So you're going to want to say, well, yeah, well, what's the real truth here? It is the truth. But we are bearing, we are, our responsibility is to bear witness to the whole truth. If you took three or four different high truth spectrums, one of them, let's say, for the sake of this conversation being mine, they would all have a core relevance, every single one of them. They would not differ in that regard. They might differ in slight variances, not because the individual channel was making 
translation mistakes, although that is possible as well. I'm not saying that's not possible. But I, I want to take that out of the picture a minute and just look at the purity of it here. So let's say you have three different channels, and all of them are, are bringing through this high-frequency uh, realities that are connected to the pure wave. They would, and let's take out any mistranslations or anything like that. Let's just look at it from this perspective. So all of these are perfectly translated, let's say, um, and but they are slightly. There are slight variances, just slight, and those variances are not mistakes, but they are fine tuning the particular reality that that individual caught the wave of. You know, that's they're they're receiving. And they are there for a purpose, a reason. Certain people are going to gravitate to one or the other. However, if you look at the core of the material, it is the same. So we have a core truth that is resonant with the stream, the pure stream of the Rana wave. So when you look at a gazillion different possibilities that are opened to any one moment, not all those possibilities are relevant to the evolutionary process of the souls involved. And that takes us back to what I said earlier, that souls have a cap or a limit in, in incarnational form and even outside of that to a degree, as to how many of those uh, time possibilities, those um, uh, potential realities can be received by them. Because there are many irrelevant ones. They exist, but they are irrelevant to the uh, evolutionary process of all being. They aren't even fractured. They're just irrelevant. Again, we could just talk about this for hours and hours and hours. It's such a deep topic. And we could all just have our eyes crossed as a result. <laughs> I only bring this up because there is a relevance for us in understanding these, this whole picture in some way. We are going deeper and deeper into this vein of consciousness. And we're going to become so confused if we don't have some kind of direction. Now, I'm not going to be the one to give everybody direction, obviously not. But I'm putting in my little two cents from the Thoth extreme here. Because more and more, through hook or crook, you're going to have to find some relevance in all of this. And the way it works and how it addresses your needs, your true needs, in, in spiritual development. I chose to put this in the Reality War series because it comes to the fundamental principle of how off-world beings, arconic cloud, etc., can manipulate our directions, our, our focus. They're not really manipulating something that's called a timeline. I mean, they are, you know, I've said they do that, and they do, but I, I want to get a little finer to the point here. Yeah, they're doing that, but they're doing it through our focus, our direction. They're doing it by diversion, diverting us from the things that are important, diverting us to look in another direction. And as we look at it in a non-informed -inform way, information is the key. If you're looking at it in an informed way, you cannot be duped by it. If you're not informed, then you can be led astray down that crooked path. So this very much figures into the reality war. The more that we become conscious and aware and understanding or at least being able to surf the wave of quantum reality, the better we will become aligned to the highest truth that we need to be embracing for this, this tsunami experience of 
moving into a new, completely new system from world system one to world system two in reality and shape, form, experience. So I will bring this episode of the reality war to conclusion here. I feel we've done enough mind bending for now. And I thank you all for listening. All right, welcome back. So Maya, I was really interested to see how how you wrapped this up, how you, you know, reminded us of the, you know, I mean, because it's also mind bending on one level. Uh, not on one level, on like several levels. As you <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but that the importance of it for our understanding of our responsibility as we move through time, as we do our best to tune in, not only with the pure time stream, the Rana time wave, as you describe it, but with our own best upward evolutionary path, you know, among many potential timelines that we as individual souls might choose, that there is a particular responsibility that we can be aware of, that the information presented here can help us to surf the Varana time wave rather than be sucked off in different directions because we are misinformed or uninformed. Um, having the information presented here puts us in a position to, to tune in, to be aware, and to take responsibility. Would, would that be uh, an accurate description? Yes, exactly. It, it's, you know, uh, timelines become, uh, the topic of timelines has become, you know, um, very popular and it's almost re reaching a fevered pitch right now. And the reason being is because it's on the table, cosmically speaking, and people are picking up on that. Uh, but the conversation around it, as I said, has missed the point in some ways. Um, not that there hasn't been some really interesting and valid, you know, conversation, but uh, from the Fofic perspective, that piece is missing. And uh, that's what I'm attempting to help define, refine, and put into place with all of these uh, reality war, um, you know, videos. Uh, but this one in particular addresses the fact that we cannot get um, too caught up in the drama, the play of the concept, the idea of all these timelines, because it would be too convenient, even subconsciously, to say, oh, well, you know, there's a timeline for me. There's a timeline where everything just works out for me the way I want it. Uh, and, and, and these people are suffering here, but, you know, in another timeline, they're not suffering. So I really don't have to worry about it. Uh, you know, I, I'm being, you know, I'm being exaggerating a little bit, right. but that edge is there. That suggestion is there in the con subconscious because there's so many choices. So we think, oh, we'll just, you know, we'll go over here and do it. And, and we don't, what we need to understand is that we're responsible for what we're living now and the timeline that we're living on now. And if we don't grasp that responsibility and act upon it with integrity, we're not going to a better timeline. <laughs> you know, um, we need to, we need to uh, deal with this. I don't mean put ourselves in a box and stay put in it. I'm saying we need to live it with integrity and understanding and experience. And as we do, we open our minds and hearts to, to form a synergy, a collective, heart ascension consciousness to move forward to the highest uh, and best uh, experience of reality, thus timeline, that will lead us into what both calls, you know, the new earth star and world system too, uh, all of this. But we cannot just be cavalier with what we have at hand. Yeah, that, um, that notion of Oh, well, you know, yeah, this is a bad timeline, but over on the other one, nobody's suffering, so it doesn't matter. You know, essentially what that does is it takes us out of the present. Mm -hmm. It um, sort of pulls the ground out from beneath our feet with our permission. Like we're just going, oh, well, you know, um, as I say, cavalier is a, a good 
phrase, um, if it is a good word for, for that um, risk of, of, of not being present. As uh, I probably shared this before, my favorite Aldous Huxley quote is that uh, the present moment is the only aperture through which we can pass from time into eternity. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is where God, the goddess, is waiting for us right here, right now not in some other timeline, how we choose to act right here and now, what values we choose to enthrone in our hearts and to act on. Mm. And so I, I feel this is, you know, profoundly important uh, that's being shared. And as you say, it is very much in the popular consciousness now. It's become, you know, this sort of glib buzzword thing. Oh yeah, I'm on the wrong timeline. I'm going to jump over into your timeline. I mean, you know, there's the Dos Equis commercials, the Mexican beer. Which well, I have seen it. Oh, okay. So it's got this very distinguished looking guy with salt and pepper hair, white, salt and pepper beard, white hair. And he's always, he's like the coolest guy in the world. He's called the most interesting man in the universe. And um, he, they have these billboards. And, um, and one billboard, he's always got a little tagline with the beer commercial, you know, where he, and, and, and it ends with, stay thirsty, my friends. You know, it's like, He's so cool that avocados ripen for him on command. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is cool. <laughs> right, you know. And then, so this has become a meme now in social media where people put in their own things with, you know, the most interesting man in the universe for the Dos Equis commercial. And one of them I recently saw, I mean, they show the guy, you know, it's just the guy looking at you kind of like, here I am, the most interesting man in the universe. Often seen with two, you know, statuesque Playboy bunnies on either side of him. And he goes, uh, I seldom incarnate on Earth, but when I do, I always make sure to have two alternate timelines in place. Oh, oh, you see that that absolutely I haven't heard that, but that yeah. absolutely expresses what I'm talking about right there. Right. I got this covered. I'm on two timelines and I can yeah, I don't like this one. I'm over here now. You know, um, our good friend Nancy Hopkins says that, you know, she um, received a higher level request and said, um, Nancy, we, we're having trouble over on this other timeline and we need you to jump timelines. Would you come over? And, you know, and however one does that, I don't even want to go there, but you know, I trust Nancy. Um, another example in pop culture is the movie uh, Men in Black 3, which was made in 2012. So it's 10 years ago already, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the notion of timelines had sufficiently entered popular consciousness even 10 years ago that um so will smith has to go back in time to save tommy lee jones from being killed by an alien who's trying to change time so that his whole race doesn't get wiped out and it's this really nasty alien who's got little darts that shoot out of his hand and kill people and mm -hmm. uh so they go back in time to 1969 to try to save tommy lee jones long story short the key character they insert into the story whoever wrote the script had sufficient awareness of timelines that the key character is this sweet little guy named Griffin. They call him Griff, and he's always wearing a ski cap, right? And, and he's kind of hanging out real innocent and strange. He's a fifth dimensional being. And the guys with Men in Black, which is the agency that, you know, overlooks um, alien activity on Earth, say, oh yeah, there's a fifth dimensional being out of the room. Uh, he's able to exist on multiple timelines at once. He can see anything going on in multiple timelines. And uh, the reason he always wears a ski cap is because if he takes his ski cap off, you see that the top of his skull is nothing but light, mm -hmm. right? He's existing in this fifth dimension. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, they're in Greenwich Village in 1969 at this scene and then with Andy Warhol and Yoko Ono and a bunch of tall, models who of course the models are all aliens secretly but um you know and little griffin is standing there going uh oh okay no we're good because we're not on this timeline where uh, uh the waitress is going to drop that tray and the evil alien made all the lights on broadway in which case we're going to be dead in five seconds oh whoosh that was close okay so now you know <laughs> it's like it's it's a fascinating uh, it's anyway men in black yeah yeah it's well, you know, it, yeah, it, it, and, it, and it shows the complexity, but it also shows the confusion. Um, yeah. You know, the universe really has a skein of complexity, but at the core is the simplicity. The core is pure and simple. The complexity is the labyrinth that the mind has to absorb in pure crystal and light 
in order to reach the center of the dominion. And if it's unable to do that, then it, it is not received well within the time frame that it's looking for uh, into that domain. So all of life is like attempting to find that pure crystalline thread through the labyrinth, through all the complexities of the universe to get to that pure core resonance. Now, I'm not saying that we on planet Earth at this time can, you know, just do, do that. But we certainly can move closer to it. And that's what we're being asked to do. Not by denying or trying to say, oh, that's too complicated. I don't want to look at it. Because it's science. It's, it's reality. And it's taking us with it. It's like the dragon's breath. It's just going. Oh, and we have to ride that dragon's breath into the next realm. So we have to be a part of it, but we need to do it with the understanding that we do not have to um, sort out the complexities. We can hear them, we can receive them in a higher consciousness, but we have to act through that pure spiritual um, momentum that comes from the heart. And when you combine that momentum with the higher intelligence that can take in all of that complexity and just go, you know, <laughs> and make it, make it, re make it live into the, into the real life spectrum. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing because it balances everything out, but we're at the point here where our mental energy is having to shift. Our intellectual abilities are having to find new roots, new common ground with a cosmos that's far more, more developed, more expansive than anything we could previously imagine. And yet we're being asked to imagine it now, at least in newer stages of that reality. So timelines serve that purpose, but again, if they're not relative, if the timelines, there are gazillion timelines, but only a, only a few, relatively speaking, <laughs> only a few are relative. You mean relative, relative? I think you mean to say relevant. Relevant, I'm sorry. <laughs> only a few, relatively speaking, only a few are relevant. <laughs> there we go. Right. <laughs> to, the, uh, to the progression of our experience and embracing this new Earth star you know, experience within ourselves. That was a mouthful, but... Right. Okay, so being informed, as we now are, or at least those lucky souls who are uh, able to hear this, then are there ways that we can tune in more closely with the Ronner Time Wave? Are there ways that we can avoid being distracted I mean, um, it's probably just, you know, all the things we tell people about how to raise your heart frequency. And yeah, yeah. But, you know, also, it's an extremely personal experience. Well, everything is, let's face it. But right now, you know, while when we're wanting to experience unity and we're wanting to experience a synerge synergetic reality together, which is something we're, we're, we're working toward and we're doing on deeper and deeper levels, but when it comes down to it, receiving the understanding that you need to move forward and finding the doors to open, that is such a personal experience. And it comes from the deepest desire to serve spirit, whatever that means to you. And, you know, it doesn't have to, it can, it can come in a form of a discipline, but as Thotha said to me recently, certainly disciplines are beautiful, like you know, yoga or meditation, or there's all kinds of beautiful spiritual disciplines. I, he's not knocking them and I'm not knocking them, but he's simply saying that everything evolves and changes in the universe. And we're being asked now to move even further into this evolution by saying, by, by embracing parts of ourself that are already developed, but have not been heard. And that means it's outside of spiritual discipline uh, in the sense of, of a, a practice. I should say not spiritual discipline, but spiritual practice that has discipline within it. So certainly the, just the practices will still serve to a point, but really we're being asked to go beyond that point. And that means that 
there's nothing to grasp onto. Oh, well, I read this book or so said, or, or uh, you know, um, uh, Edgar Casey said, or whatever. Not that we don't listen to all that, sure. But, you know, it comes down to that personal moment when you say, you know, I don't really understand this right now, but I am totally committed to the spirit that's, that's motivating me. And I'm going to follow that spirit. If it takes me into places I don't quite understand, but my heart is there, I'm simply going to open my heart and allow the osmosis of that intelligence and that knowledge to permeate my being. And it, it, may, it may not happen like that, but yet again, it may. But if it, it's going to be a process, but the process is one more that's more omnipresent, more open-ended than something that you can intellectually discipline yourself to follow and do, you know. Does that make sense to you, Michael? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does, actually, because, you know, as you point out in the beginning, part of the reason for the necessity of this message that you share in the video is because we are at a time of such intense confusion, deliberately fostered on one level, intense confusion, and also just confusion as a result of the evolutionary nexus that we're at, which is providing the pressure that is forcing us as souls, you might say, to this point of needing to take responsibility, of needing to move into this new understanding. It's not like, oh, okay, well, I could move into this new understanding, but I think I'll watch uh, NFL football today. No, we are being forced as a point of evolution you know, in, in the same way that the old understanding of, you know, yeah. natural selection, you know, there's, there are times of intense environmental change, you know, tectonic shifts, meteor hits the planet, whatever, where evolution, uh, evolutionary forces come into play that force, um, you know, new evolutionary um, mm -hmm. manifestations so okay. it feels like you know that's where we are like this message is necessary and very helpful because we're under intense evolutionary pressure and we're going to have to face this yes, I mean, yes you can always bury your head further in the sand but um well yeah but you know uh, one of the things that i'm being shown is that when you bury your head in the sand the spiritual being that is you okay some persons on this planet have really really walked away from their spiritual being many lifetimes that doesn't mean they all don't have it we all have it but you know they walked away from it for so many eons of experience that it's it's difficult for them to, they're the ones that are going to be the most lost but the regular person even if they do nothing but watch football and go to work and come home and take care of the kids and watch football and eat hamburgers and whatever you know and they're sinking down into the mire because they're doing all this stuff and they're not attending to their spiritual reality even those people now are going to find they're watching NFL football and all of a sudden a light appears over the head of one of the football players. Or I don't know, I'm just making this stuff up. But, you know, something happens in the context of the everyday mundane da, 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 that they think, you know, they're feeding into their being. Uh, it's going to start happening even in that realm because the soul is so it's so full of that feeling of the call the call is there it's not through religion it's not through faith. it's not through jesus it's not through buddha in the sense of you know uh, confining uh, dogmas it is in the sense of the spiritual beings of all those masters but it's even beyond that it's not them it's us that spiritual being is called that we have resides within us is calling us and we can't we're getting to where we're not going to be able to escape it you can sit in the corner and count your fingers and toes and your fingers and toes are going to start lighting up <laughs> You know what I mean? It's going to be, it's going to happen, but, but, you know, it's going to happen a lot easier and a lot, a lot with more grace and more efficiency if you pay a little more attention to it, you know? Yeah, you know, it makes sense to me. It really does. You know, given the, the, the richness, it's ironic. I mean, there's the richness of it, the complexity of it, sometimes mind bending complexity of it. And then, as you say at the end, there's the divine simplicity of it mm -hmm. as well. And so rather than seek out further complexities for discussion right now, like 
for their own sake, we could go there. But um, the video itself is, is so rich and, and worth watching again. Um, and I feel what we have explored already here right now today um, is right. Right guidance, right exploration. Certainly for me, I understand it better than I did before. So, you know, unless you feel there's there's something else that's coming through to be covered. Well, uh, just one other thing that I'm thinking of at the moment, and that is, and I said this throughout my career, <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it's important to realize that whatever I'm saying to people and I'm bringing through or expressing in this, in this context, um, if you know somebody on the other side of the planet who's never seen these videos, will never see these videos, never heard me, doesn't know anything about me, doesn't know anything about Thoth, is out in the middle of the wilderness, and he's you know uh, milking a yak or something. <laughs> you know, I mean, he he's just arriving. He's a good person, or she, and you know, and, and, and that's that's life for them. They are are not going to be um, left out because they didn't hear uh, you know. Maya and Artuma talking, or, or you know, some of the other people out there that have good information to share, they're not going to be left out. They're going, they're going to receive what they need to receive in their own way, in their own time and place. And those people, a lot of them are closer, more closer, closer to nature, closer to the experience of life than we are in this busy world. So they might receive it in a much more easeful manner. <laughs> So it's not that, you know, people have to listen to me, but yeah, I serve a purpose here. You serve a purpose. We all serve a purpose and I'm doing my thing and I've been doing it for over 55 years and I'm going to keep on doing it. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that, you know, it's the end all. Obviously not. I mean, as I say many times, Stoth doesn't tell me everything. So it's a whole progressive plan and I have a part in it here, I feel, and I'm extending that to people who are resonant with it. That's what it is. Right. And it also, as we have shared sometimes, you know, there is simply by the act of this being put out on Blue Star Rising channel, on YouTube, the people who see it, share it with other friends. You know, we have more than 1,200 subscribers and climbing right now that, you know, that enters into the collective consciousness of humanity mm -hmm. and in a mysterious way rolls out across the uh across the planet and yes. so so it's rolling it's waving uh it is that beautiful mutable wave right of energy that's it and and it's just been um amplified and and clarified um right here and now as we talk so and as you listen and watch uh dear friends out there and we thank you and of course we encourage you to like and share and subscribe um, to Blue Star Rising. And, you know, down in the uh, links, you'll see our um, Patreon link. If you uh, are inclined to donate, we very much appreciate it. Also a link to um, Reverend Maya's Akashic readings uh, that she provides on a personal basis. And so with that, um, thank you so much for being with us on Blue Star Rising. And God bless us, everyone. And all. <laughs> and all. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.